All right, Trek Brunch, Star Trek Sunday is back. <laughs> Yay. Yay. We're here. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think for, uh, for people who may not have watched uh, Star Trek, it's been what, ages? Yeah, I think it's probably been a year, at least. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> um, Star Trek Sunday started, um, was it an idea that Samantha had um, because you had never seen any Star Trek. Not at all. No, not. only one episode. <laughs> that um, had traumatized you. <laughs> it was a traumatizing episode. It was a traumatizing experience. So after like, I don't know, six or seven years old, I didn't watch Star Trek um, until the recent movies with Chris Pine and everybody. And, um, and then I was like, wait, Star Trek's actually kind of cool. I maybe should watch this. <laughs> That is and a I, fact. <laughs> yeah, I think, like, I was thinking about this the other day. It actually started because I posted a Facebook post. I was like, hey, guys, I need a new show. What should I watch? And you chimed in, and you're like, watch Voyager. And I was like, oh, yeah. And then I was like, Erin, I think we should probably, like, start a YouTube series about my friend finally watches Star Trek. <laughs> yeah. And then we did. <laughs> we did. And you watched all of Voyager, and then we watched TNG up until, I think, season four? The end of season four, and then I started watching some season five episodes, um, which I then stopped because of what we're talking about today. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, all of Voyager and then the first four seasons of Next Gen. That's awesome. And then, which is like, I think a lot of people would probably say like, that's when it gets good, you know? Uh -huh. <laughs> so. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah. <laughs> I texted um, you and was like, why did we stop Star Trek Sunday before season five? Now it's good. <laughs> yeah, right. Because, um, yeah, I think, like, uh, so, I mean, I was kicking my live streams off again, and we had missed doing this, and I wanted to have some time on Sundays devoted to just not necessarily talking about science, but just legitimately talking about Star Trek, and called you. <laughs> it's like, texted you, it was like, do yeah. you want me to do this again? And, uh, and so in the last week now, you have watched a lot. <laughs> a lot. Um, yeah, so I watched, um, okay, so the thing is we're talking about Picard. And um, because I had only watched up to the end of season four, you just Googled like what episodes should people watch if they don't know Star Trek um, to prepare for Picard? Like what's the bare minimum that somebody should watch? Um, and it was suggested uh, the movies uh, for Contact Nemesis, the Locutus episodes for Picard for, for Next Gen, and one other episode, Measure of a two other oh. episodes, Measure of a Man, and right. which you'd seen already. I had seen that one already. Yeah, there was one other one though. Um, there was a Measure of a Man, the Locutus. Um, I don't remember, and then and then First Contact and Nemesis. Yeah, but there was one with the the episode with Hugh. Is that the oh yeah, I Borg. Time. That was I, it. that one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, awesome. So I watched all of those. <laughs> Very <laughs> and impressive. <Picard. laughs> and, and all of Picard, Picard. <laughs> in one week. So round of applause because <laughs> that's fabulous. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Um, so you, yeah, that's a lot. So in terms of the background episodes, I mean, how did, were you lost at all? Were you? No, actually. I mean, I was kind of worried because I like, I was like, oh God, am I going to get spoilers or something? But um, it didn't feel that way. And I do think they were, again, like the bare minimum to watch before Picard. Like they really made sense. Although it was when Picard started, like the first two episodes or so, I was like, did, did she tell me the right episodes to watch? Like, I feel kind of lost. <laughs> but um then they paid off and I was like, oh, I, I get it now. Good. But there were still some definite holes of like me wanting or feeling like I needed a little bit more background, particularly with the Romulan stuff. Okay. And um, all of that. But yeah, so I think they were really the right episodes, again, for a bare minimum. I was glad I had watched Voyager. Right. This is what I was like, that's kind of what I was thinking with Picard. It felt like more of an a storytelling homage to Voyager than necessarily Next Generation, other other than obviously the the character callbacks. But yeah. it it felt like yeah, with all the discussion of the Borg and everything, like that's where that paid off the most. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'll say so. My sort of conclusion after Picard, I was kind of interesting in that like. Um, 
it's like the whole thing actually doesn't have to do with Picard. Even with next gen, the whole thing has to do with data. It literally, right. the entire thing, like he's the impetus for so many of the stories and so many of the plots and so many of the themes. Um, and then, then in, in Picard, he's mourning Data's death and then it'll, it's be about the androids. Um, right. They're the main characters, um, which I thought was interesting because Picard is the captain, you know, he's the name you know, um, but really all, all, everything has to do with data. Yeah. Yeah, it really does. I mean, um, you know, I thought that they did such a good job of, I think, making data that sort of where he wasn't present, you know, they didn't bring him back. I think that was like a lot of people when we saw trailers and we had kind of heard that Brent Spiner was going to be back in it we were like but he died and <laughs> um and so are they bringing him like is he going to be resurrected somehow but I but I think they did a good job about him like being present without necessarily you know um being part of it if that makes yeah sense. yeah definitely he was he was clearly around as a thought and as a I mean, he's the reason that these two girls are, you know, out in the world. Right. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, that, that was interesting to me though. I was watching it going, this is not about Picard. This right. is about data, you know? <laughs> right. Um, definitely. Yeah. But um, dialing back a second to the, the movies though, with first contact, <laughs> I have questions. <laughs> Okay, bring it on. Is, I love first take... contact. Also, happy first contact day. Happy first, first contact day. On, co oh, on first contact day. <laughs> Which and last I... year, you had no idea what that was. <laughs> and last yeah. round, like, I know, last year and the year before, I started following a lot of more science fiction Trek people because um, we were doing this. And right. like April 5th, like deluge of first contact day. I was like, <laughs> what's that? <laughs> Yeah. But, um, okay, help me out here. This is taking place in the year 2068, right? Tw uh, first Contact? Yeah. 2063. I'm very proud of that off the top of my head. But yes, <laughs> <laughs> correct. Okay. 40 years, 43 years from now. Did the 1960s not happen? Oh, I cut you out for like, just a they're second. They're all... Yeah. Oh. Nope, you're good. You're back. Sorry, what was that okay. like? That was like my big moment. <laughs> Did the 1960s not happen in Star Trek? What do you mean? Because they're surprised to see spaceships. They're like, she's like, what's her name? Lily is like, oh my God, is that the Earth from above? Like, oh, I said, well, okay. So I think like a lot of it has to do with the idea. So I think, so more space exploration. Sorry, I wasn't sure if you were going to like, did the original like did star trek air in oh. like, <laughs> no, like the like actual meta. historical right period. space travel yeah no so the way that i think it's presented is it's not so much that um humans haven't been to space before but because they they're still like they're recovering from the third world war like there's an entire generation that has you know that is basically the entire infrastructure of the world is obliterated and so people haven't been exposed to space travel in a very 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 long time so i mean timing you, again you got to think about it like that was like what almost 25 years ago now that movie came out and so that was the idea of like that i think you know, we're much closer to First Contact Day now than when that movie was made. And so they, you know, the premise was like, this is far in the future. Um, and having World War Three in the middle that people haven't, there hasn't been space travel and there hasn't been that, um, you know, that sort of, the, I guess, the PR side of things to get people excited about space. And because, um, yeah. yeah, that was like the, the only thing I could. That's to funny. I had never thought about that. Yeah. <laughs> There was there, like there was this world, the Third World War, and that like somehow that sort of reset some things, right. you know, and so no one was remembering like the Armstrong, like we have been to the moon, <laughs> right? Because they were all so I, that was the only thing that I was like cocking my head. <laughs> I was like, yeah. this is in the future, and yet they don't funny. remember. <laughs> yeah, that is um, funny. 
but I loved the movie in general. Like I really, that was, was it's such a good fun. movie. I super, I super love it. It is definitely like one of my favorite. Um, yeah. Star Trek. It's my favorite Star Trek movie after the Voyage Home, the one with the whales originally. But it's definitely my favorite next gen movie, uh -huh. um, for sure. And yeah. you'll get to the one with the whales. Okay. <laughs> <I can't wait. laughs> I'm sure I will get to it eventually, but I'm excited for that one because that one. Yeah, great. I mean, Lily was freaking awesome. Yeah. She's probably one of my favorite characters I've ever seen. <laughs> she is awesome. The women at Warp have an awesome um, Lily sticker that mm. uh, I've seen them uh, sell at conventions and stuff is really, really cool. Yeah, she's just, she's a, a, such a great character. So I'm glad you got to see, and did you feel like you were missing anything with, with watching First Contact because you haven't finished Next Gen yet? Oh, um, not really. I okay. felt like it stood alone, particularly because it's, it's about the culmination of two First Contact Day, which right. I think is kind of a standalone event. Right. Um, no, I didn't feel like it. I did feel watching Picard, think, I couldn't help but think like, ooh, like, am I missing something from the finale of Next Gen here that is going to gotcha. put this even in more context? But to be honest, not really, because like TNG ended, you know, and then they made these movies, or I guess, I well, the movies, when, when did TNG end? I need to... We're gonna look this up real quick. <laughs> um, when <laughs> did the next? This is. I'm sorry that I need to look this up. No. Nope. And yeah. no judgment here. <laughs> Thanks. So 1994, and then um, first contact. We were just looking this up. Um, came out in 1996. Oh, so okay. like that kind of picked up, right? I guess I was yeah, because. Mm -hmm. um, so it kind of picks up from that. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't think you like, honestly, because a lot of the plot in Picard was fairly new, like the Romulan stuff and all that. Yeah, it was. And <laughs> I feel so stupid, but help me out here. Where in the timeline does Picard happen? I was <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> Come on. No worries. Really after Voyager, but yes. <laughs> so it's after Voyager, and it is um, and after Deep Space Nine, and basically what's happened is, and I don't, I don't know how much have they published like the exact dates or anything, but it's essentially that um, so Voyager happens, Deep Space Nine happens. Then, because you've seen the Kelvin timeline, right, that you, what we have is, um, Ro remember Romulus exploded, right? Yeah. Romulus went supernova, and that made Nero, the bad guy in the Kelvin timeline, like, try to go back and keep that from, ha like, and then that kicked off the entire, he ended up going through that wormhole that destroyed the USS Kelvin and Kirk's dad, and spawned the new timeline in those movies. Oh, wait, wait whoa, wait, say that again. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Because I don't like, know who you're, who's Kelvin? So the Kel, sorry, the Kelvin timeline is what we call the Chris Pine films, the rebooted 2009 films. Uh, okay. So there was, yeah, those three movies um, that came out, those take place in a separate, timeline from all of others all the other star trek stuff because mm -hmm. because nero and spock went back in they went through a wormhole and went so far back in time that they disrupted kirk's childhood and what the incident the inciting incident that they disrupted was the destruction of the uss kelvin so that's why we call it the kelvin timeline okay um, so okay. that clarification but and then in the Kelvin timeline, remember, they destroy Vulcan, right? Mm -hmm. But Nero, Nero was a Romulan, and he was distraught after Romulus was destroyed. And Spock was trying to, like, keep that from happening with the red matter and all of that stuff. Well, in addition to that, as we learned in Picard, Jean-Luc Picard was also trying to help the Romulans get off their planet basically before the star went supernova 
Um, so like Deep Space Nine and Voyager ended. Then some point later, Romulus is like going to be destroyed. And that's when Picard leaves the Federation. And then this picks up like whatever, did they say 15 years after that or some, something like that? 20 okay. years after that. Um, so Romulus has been destroyed. It's right. It went supernova. Ignore everything about Kelvin because I totally confused you there. But it's just because of that Romulus explosion that um, that takes place in this prime Star Trek timeline. And for anyone watching this, I hope that clarified it and didn't lead to more yeah. confusion. But um, <laughs> but so so this is like decades after Voyager, yeah. basically. Okay. Yeah. 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 No, I I, I figured that, but I think I got confused too with like Admiral Janeway being in either Nemesis or First Contact, she was like, right. very brief, or one of the episodes, very brief moment. And so I was like, she's an admiral there, but Picard is still a captain. Right. Like, so that is, so that is something that we've, that I think has been touched on in later Next Gen episodes, and maybe some of the Next Gen movies that you, between First Contact and Nemesis, where they talk about him becoming like he has opportunities to advance and I chooses see. not to i see okay. so yeah so janeway huh, my science <laughs> slytherin sister she was like climb the ladder man <laughs> like <laughs> leadership is my jam um <laughs> and uh right. and but picard was always like a little bit more hesitant to to do that mm -hmm. so so i hope okay. that makes sense a yeah, so yeah. Much. okay <laughs> okay good um so yeah, it's not necessarily that like captain to admiral is like a set date thing. You sure. Know? Yeah. I was just getting like really That's funny. confused. <laughs> when is this happening? When? Why? And so, but they did allude, I mean, but Picard has been an admiral for some time. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, is which, it, was it Nemesis, which movie did Riker and Troy get married? Did you nemesis. watch that? It was yeah. a nemesis. It was it's opening yeah. a nemesis. Okay, yeah. good. I they were like <laughs> they were one of my OG ships. Like I remember <laughs> even when I didn't like know much about Star Trek and watched it periodically, I really liked Riker and like, Troy. They belong together. They're really cute. And I love, yeah. I always forget they're like so sweet and Picard. Like they're just... Yeah, they're just adorable and awesome. And I love Riker. I love Riker. Um, mm -hmm. We've had this conversation about like whether I love Riker or Jonathan Frakes, but I think they're just one in the same. <laughs> in my mind, they're just one in the same. And yeah. I'm okay with that. I can but, see that. Like, but with Picard, I, you know, I thought that for me personally, the gems of that show were Hugh and Seven of Nine. Yeah, I... I didn't get a lot from Seven of Nine. Like, I, I love her. She's one of my absolute favorite, like, characters of all Star Trek time. Um, I think, I mean, she was super badass here, but I didn't get a lot else, really, mm -hmm. um, from what I'm remembering. Um, you know, I guess, well, yeah, I mean, the moment that she plugs in, to the Borg thing, I was like, no, 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 no. We fought forever to keep this. It was like the, I know, the Steve Carell meme. I was like, no, no. Yeah, totally. Um, but then she unplugged. I was like, oh, thank God. Right, right. But that was quite intense. Um, and Hugh was. I kept honestly thinking he was going to turn out to be a villain for a hot second. Nice. Just because I felt like you know. I was like, we can't have nice things. Like, <laughs> right, right. But he was amazing. That that when he died, that was really heartbreaking. Yeah. Um, and yeah, they were um, very. They were a lot of fun to watch. I think yeah. him in particular. That that payoff was seeing him and then remembering the episode. It was like, yeah. And it's such a good episode. It's so funny because it's like he's not in it. You know, he's like it's one episode, right? But mm -hmm. it's just. It sticks with you so much, and it's such a good episode that I was just so happy they brought him back. I'm upset <laughs> that he died. Um, I'm really upset that he died. Um, and likewise with Seven of Nine, I think that her character, 
I wish that they'd kind of done a little bit more with her. Um, That's how I felt. Yeah, because it didn't, it didn't seem very natural, some of the stuff she was doing, you know, that um, they kind of alluded to so much, but then some of it wasn't really in line with the seven that we know. And like, I got to say at the end, when she was talking about like having been abandoned when they got back to earth and like been on her own, I'm like, the hell? Like, what? I was like, I my stomach dropped. Cause I was like, you can't tell me. First of all, they left and she was with Chakotay. So you at least have to acknowledge that. That's right. I pushed that out. <laughs> remember? I pushed it out too until I remembered that. <laughs> I mean, you could at least mm. mention it, you know, and say... I almost feel like maybe them not mentioning it is them going like, yeah, that was a mistake. <laughs> I mean, fair, fair play. But all it needs to be is one throwaway line of like, since my husband and I left, separated from each other... I didn't have much contact with the Voyager crew. Something. Yeah. Done. That's it. That's all I did. Yeah. Because um, I was like, oh, they wouldn't. And like, Janeway just loved her. Like, I know. There's no, I can't, I personally cannot fathom the idea that I'm getting really emotional about this. I can't fathom the idea that Janeway would abandon Seven like that. Like, I know. honestly. So it's almost it's almost like there's like just a bunch of stuff that happened that we we don't know about. But I know I was the same way. She just, she wasn't served. Um, she was. I think she was. It felt like she was mostly there, honestly, to be a part of the trailers for Picard. So the people were like, "Ooh, Seven's back!" And then she like doesn't exactly do a lot. Yeah. You know. I mean, she does save the day. Like. But. <laughs> Yeah, but in, like, the the two, I guess the two episodes that she was in, mm -hmm. which, first of all, like, the standalone episodes, I think, you know, for being, and I think especially you'll see if, as we go into, like, Discovery and all of that, like, these shorter seasons remove filler episodes, so there's mm. not as many, like, standalone ones, and so you don't get that breathing time to get to know the characters as well. Yeah. Um... But I would say, like, what I would consider the filler episodes were probably the Seven of Nine one, where they go to the, um, where they go to the planet with her, um, mm -hmm. to hunt down Maddox. And, and that one was awesome. Like, I thought that was a good episode. I wasn't uh, in love with her coming back and just de destroying her, like, yeah. I mean, they were, they were a couple, uh, destroying her girlfriend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But, uh, and then the, the Nepenthe, the one with Riker and Troy, like those were kind of, you could take them out and you Probably, would still have yeah. the Picard arc, you know? So there's, yeah. I guess they're standalone in that sense. Um, but her, her episodes I thought were good, but yeah, as a character, I just. Yeah. I just wanted more because I love her. That's all. <laughs> I mean, don't we all, but. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe they were maybe they were just wanting to make it not too much of a Voyager show. <laughs> you know, keep maybe. it keep it yeah. focused on as much as they can on next gen. Mm -hmm. um, so. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh well. Yeah. <laughs> Another random question. So, <laughs> Tasha Yar, mm -hmm. right? Is that supposed to sound like Tasha Yar? <laughs> you mean the Tashal, uh, Chal, Chal Tiar? Uh huh. The the Romulan. That's funny. I never thought about that. I don't. I kept he hearing it and being like, and then there's this episode in Next Gen where her sister or something is a Romulan. Her, I uh, yeah. We'll we'll her hold off on that because you. I is it her daughter? I I have to go remember it's, this. I think it's her daughter. But I kept hearing it and I was going. Is that like completely co coincidental or? That's funny. The Shell TR. Yeah, that's really, really funny. Um, yeah, Yar's daughter, half Romulan. Yeah. yeah. Commander Sela. <laughs> I do love that. I did love the text that you got, uh, I got from you about that. You're like, what? 
Because you loved, you loved Tasha Yar. I did, yeah. If people go back and watch, like, our previous um, Star Trek Sunday ones, those were... um... I know. I was, like, gushing over her, like, completely, and then she dies. I felt so bad. I just kept getting texts from you, like, as you're watching Next Gen, you're like, I love Tasha Yar. Tasha Yar's amazing. She's just the best. And uh, I was like, no comments. (laughs) it'll be fine and then I just got like 80 weeping emojis <laughs> and I was like oh I remember not. that yeah <laughs> she saw it <laughs> oh. but yeah that was so yeah. funny Jeez, okay. so <laughs> all right <laughs> um yeah that's funny <laughs> I hadn't I don't think I do not think that that is um that there I might have missed that the tall Shiar, yeah, that's it. Tall Shiar. Tall Shiar, that's, yeah. So tall Shiar. <laughs> similar, but... <laughs> I don't know, maybe you cracked something. <laughs> I doubt it, but... <laughs> maybe, maybe um, Commander Sela started... No, because the Tall Shiar has been around a long time. I was going to say to honor her mother. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> As some underground society. If that's true, and if I've completely missed that, I apologize, and that's brilliant, but I don't think it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think so either. I think awesome. Um, right. So Romulans, are they good or are they evil? <laughs> <laughs> that is the Star Trek philosophical question of the decade. Romulans be Romulaning. Like <laughs> they're, they are. Um, you know, they're always known for being very secretive. They're very, and it's so funny because I think that you know, the Star Trek universe has got so expansive, like, from next gen on, and, um, but actually to understand the Romulans best, I would, that's original series stuff, to be honest, like, the, the original series first encounter with the Romulans is solid, and, um, I mean, essentially, and, you know, I've, I've talked about this before when I gave my 50 years Star Trek thing where I had the historian with me and she talked about how um you know the Romulans kind of represented China that Mm. uh in this 19 in the Cold War because they were so secretive they were so secretive that like people didn't know anything about the Chinese culture like in the country you know that was like we don't know anything about the Chinese government or anything like that and um and so the Romulans kind of represented that. Oh, I lost you for a second as well. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, I think I remember you. Oh, sorry. My oh, no, you're good. No, that's fine. To... Okay. Um, yeah, um, but I think yeah. I remember you mentioning that actually. Yeah. Um, and, and I think we do. And because, again, you only watched Voyager and then some next gen, um, you see more Romulans too in Deep Space Nine. But really, they're like, they never, it's like they're dragged into an alliance with the Federation. They basically just want to stay solitary on their own, do their own thing, don't piss us off, you know, Mm -hmm. don't. And so the evolution then in Picard is basically like, you know, the Romulans were like, don't interfere with us, we want to be on our own. And then they needed the Federation and they needed... You know, and so I think that's a lot of, like, that background that the Federation is like, yeah, but you never helped us, you know? Like, you're dragged kicking and screaming into the Dominion War, you know, that's right. Sort of right. And, yeah, so they <clears throat> they needed them, but the, the, the uh, Federation didn't want to help them either. That was, like, Picard begging the Federation to help evacuate them. Yeah. Which they didn't do. And then... Picard gave his resignation, and then later on in in the show he goes rogue. Um, yeah. And um, but then the O lady infiltrate infiltrates Federation to try and get rid of synthetic life forms. Yeah. So <laughs> they clearly just do things on their own terms <laughs> yep that's that's pr- that is pretty par for the course to be fair now uh-huh. i think if you had so in terms of yo or what was it yeah. or oh oh 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of her, like, I think that, that what they did with her character is, um, yeah, Commander O. I guess she, I guess she was a commander. Um, I I mean I think that that was like Worf, like basically that you know the Klingons aren't part of the Federation. They have alliances, but you can mm -hmm. have a Klingon join the Federation. You can have a Klingon join Starfleet essentially, and in the sure. same way you have a Romulan join Starfleet. Um, I would have probably had a lot more security on her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would have been a smart move. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just a little bit. Um, and Sorry. <laughs> no, yeah, go. No, go on. And then the, the, the two Romulans that live with Picard in the vineyard. Our like favorite people. Is she the same one that he, he saved in the episode when they... What? There's, there's an episode, I think it's... It's either one of the movies or the last episode, or I, Borg. Um when the Romulans come to help them somehow. And there's this one Romulan captain that he talks to and she says, you have a friend in the Romulan army or something. Oh, I don't think that was supposed to be the same. Okay. I had forgotten I about that. <laughs> I was pretty sure it wasn't the same, but it was a, it was a thought. <laughs> I think that would be brilliant if it was but i don't yeah i didn't make that connection okay i didn't, I didn't think but i'm so. not i'm not making that up right there's some there's a moment when no i think you're i think you're right unless i'm yeah. i'm misremembering it too but i think you're right and if anyone remembers we can yeah follow up on that <laughs> um but yeah i mean but i loved that couple i wish that they had come back um Me i too. wish that like they, they had awesome. holodecked them or something, you know, <laughs> no. have them hang around. But yeah, they were pretty sweet. They, they were, were good. Fun. <laughs> um, and I liked that idea too, that like there was, cause it was nice to see some Romulans who weren't military and yeah. Romulan. <laughs> well, and it seems like Picard clearly has some kind of soft spot for the Romulans. Like, you know, when he's on the, he's trying to, have relationships with them and the when he goes back to the, the planet with this Romulans only sign and stuff right. and there's I mean there's clearly some kind of um affection he has for them for that yeah yeah no I think and probably a lot of guilt driven yeah and I mean, but I think too that that's a lot of Picard's character in mm -hmm. itself, you know, that he, um, you know, and it, I always kind of compare the Klingons and the Romulans just because they, they're they those like old species that have been around for ages and are, are like I said, not technically part of the Federation. Um, but, you know, he he was so involved in the Klingons too. And kind of when they needed help, he Picard was like there. And, yeah. um, and so I think that that's, that's part of his character, like with the Romulan mm -hmm. um, to just, to, to be that, to be that guy. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, uh, it was good. I think that, um, I think the, I still don't totally understand. I don't think they were able to convey this like vision that drove people to go crazy and kill and you know yeah. like she killed her like lover you know like killed him like that's not that's not a small thing you know and and they just didn't convey that i think as as well as they could have yeah um you mean the which character are you, are you talking about? I'm talking about um, the doctor, the blonde woman, um, and she killed Maddox. Oh, her! Oh my yeah. god! Yeah. What, what was up with her? <laughs> no, but it was like the idea that she had yeah. seen this vision. I know, I know. She was um, interesting. Um, yeah, like I just, I didn't know what to think about, about her. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, I guess in the end, ultimately, she decides to do the right thing. Um, but she was clearly tormented <laughs> by her decisions. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the actress can chin wobble like no one's business. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I'll give her that. I know. Like, yeah, that was weird. Um, but again, I think I agree. Like the vision, I don't. And then it was, it's like, that's what was, that's what happened in the past. Right. And we must prevent it from happening again. Right. But there's no indication it's going to happen again. <laughs> right. right. Which, personally, I'm just going to say this once. It's the plot of Mass Effect. <laughs> that is, is it the really? entire plot of Mass Effect. The ancient race is the Protheans. They have the Reapers came and wiped them out because they were achieved a level of artificial intelligence that required them to be wiped out from existence. That's a plot of Mass Effect! <laughs> to the extent that even when the show ended, when Picard, when we watched the finale, I was like, I'm not making this up. And I pulled up like the opening sequence from Mass Effect when Shepard sees a vision of the Romulans, or not the Romulans, of the Reapers coming to destroy the galaxy. Like, that, Thieves. even when they were crawling through the, like, portal at the end, I was like, it's the Reapers! <laughs> so that was my reaction through most of the show, was, I played this video game, I played the video game. <laughs> I know what's going on. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, to credit where credit's due, this, it is a recurring sci-fi sure theme right that yeah yeah you wipe out artificial intelligence gets too strong and you have to mm -hmm. wipe it out yeah i i was kind of surprised that like um the doctor guy who escapes to the the planet like there's hundreds of androids just walking around like and i there's been multiple like hints throughout the the episodes or the um, the movies and the episodes and next gen stuff. The fact that like data was some kind of sing singular achievement. Like right. There's which I was also a little bit like I wrote down like how what why is data like just the one that worked <laughs> like because <laughs> right. all of the rest of them seem to have issues. Right. And and you know. The oh, fact that he made his creed like hundreds. Oh, did I go away again? Nope. Yeah, you're good. You're yeah. back. Okay. Um, internet, internet. Yeah, that's okay. Um, but yeah, I was like, he created these like hundreds upon hundreds of new androids and they're just hanging out on this planet. Like that might worry me if I was, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. concerned about this apocalyptic event coming. Um, right. Right. But again, it's like, I, you know, like you said, there's, it's like supposedly this weird, horrible thing, but it's like, we've also survived the Borg, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. And, and I never quite wrap my head around why the Romulans were like running this Borg resurrection. Mm. Like I know ne they never kind of tied that together. You know, there's a lot You're of right, they didn't. unanswered things with that. It's almost like they just wanted to film some stuff on a board cube or something. <laughs> you know, and the then, set was expensive. <laughs> <laughs> and there were the Romulans that had been assimilated and gone crazy. Right. So they were rescuing, which is fair. Like, I mean, I can see that to say there's a lot of Romulans on this Borg ship. So we're gonna, we've captured it. Mm -hmm. We're trying to get them back. Mm -hmm. And again, like a call back to Seven of Nine and yeah. you and all of that. Like it is possible to bring people back from the Borg. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but why it was this like massive that and that was like that was my my biggest question when I started watching the beginning of it was um why it you know, at first it was sort of presented, and to be fair, it was an awesome reveal at the end of the first episode to pan back and see this Borg ship. Oh, that was amazing. That was amazing. And it's like, if they, 
if they centered an entire plot around that having that scene in there i get that okay yeah. <laughs> sure we're just gonna do this because it's cool <laughs> it's, co it's gonna be awesome yeah. um but you know but they had this thing where it was like you know it seemed really secretive it's like this thing that the romulan you know they have like this romulan but then it people are showing i was so confused i think in episode two or three um where like they show up like it's a job you know mm -hmm. they're like well we're here for work and it was like zero to however many days since the last like you know assimilation or whatever um was funny but it was like is it secretive is it not secretive like do yeah. people know about this do people not know about this why are they doing it and it never yeah. really and then closed. like i think yeah clearly we were supposed to think um at the end of one of the episodes um the one after um oh shoot dash dash is killed and then right. um He's like, there's another sister, and and then we're clearly supposed to think the other sister's evil, you know, the and right. the payoff of that, and then clearly she's not, but like, she's the you know doctor in the Borg ship, <laughs> right? Um, yeah, yeah, that you're right. There really was no major explanation for why they were there. <laughs> I didn't no. think of that. No, because I, I mean, you could you could pull that thread, but. For me, then that's because the Borg for me were always the scariest mm. thing, right? And so if they had pulled that and that had been like, you know, hey, because we're doing this excavation thing, like the Borg, we've now like released Borg nanotubes into everything and everyone's going to become a Borg. Yeah. Like, that's legit terrifying. <laughs> I was like, I was scared that that might happen to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because the Borg are terrifying. And, they are. Um, and so to have this, like, unnamed villain that is supposedly scary enough to make you go on a killing, you know, rampage mm -hmm. and kill your lover, mm -hmm. I'm like, there's, it, that's hard. I can't wrap my ma mind around that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I felt like, I mean, she was clearly manipulated somehow by O, and there was some kind of switch that right. seems like it got clicked for her to do that, and she like believed that she needed to. <clears throat> but I could, what I couldn't quite tell was if the vision was real or fabricated. Right. Yeah, we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know. And again, it's like because for me, anytime I have these questions, I'm like, well, in Mass Effect, it was. <laughs> So there were these beacons that were left behind by the Protheans that like released this vision of the Reapers coming and like all of that. So um, it really is the same. It really, yeah. yeah. It's um. Oh, geez. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it did make me want to play Mass Effect <laughs> again, though. Right. <laughs> so I started doing that. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. It's just. Uh, I mean, we'll see what happens in season two. I. So the stuff that like I loved. I loved just seeing seven of nine just because mm -hmm. she's a great character like you said um i wish i'm glad that they made it her sexuality a little bit more obvious at the end um I, yeah i wish they hadn't like kind of did they didn't they in her mm -hmm. initial episode um so that was cool um hugh was a gem i think oh. just a gem um and uh and Oh, I loved Riker showing up. Oh, it, that was amazing. That that did give me chills when they just warped in and I was like, oh, it's Riker. <laughs> He's back. Um yeah. And I'm glad I'm glad Riker and Troy have their um chemistry, you know, like it yeah. they felt really genuine as a like they felt like a genuine couple that have been They really did. Time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Imzadi. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I need to so yeah, Imzadi means beloved in in uh beta Z. Beta Z. Oh, okay. Yeah. In yeah. Her language. Which I kept forgetting and now I just want to use it all the time. <laughs> and I, it would have been cooler if I had like just had that embedded in my, yeah, <laughs> programming and had been using it. And now I'm just like, oh yeah, but it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it is now what I say. <laughs> it is now what I say. It is now officially what I say. Yeah. 
so um yeah i think there was uh there were some some issues obviously we're still confused about the plot <laughs> <laughs> well wait and there's gonna be a season two but oh so okay what happened at the end <laughs> is he is is he real? Is he him? Is what what uh... the the fans be debating? <laughs> Excellent <laughs> is the best way to put it. Um, because mostly they don't know how to categorize. They don't know if they need to give him a separate page in Memory Alpha, the Star mm-hmm. Trek wiki. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this was because someone I think someone started a page that was like a separate page that was like Jean Luc Picard drone or droid android yeah and people were like no like it's john luke picard but for me it was a, it didn't have as emotional of a thing when like the entire lead up to that was him dying mm-hmm. having a vision with data where they talk about the importance of humanity is mm-hmm. knowing you're gonna die mm-hmm. that was cut powerful. to we just resurrected you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you're not really dead, even though like you're not gonna, you're still gonna die, but mm-hmm. you would die when you normally would. But we could bring you back, and we could make you immortal. We just didn't. We just chose mm-hmm. not to. Um, but it's still really important for humans to know that they're mortal. But right. That I was. I was. That was like that kind of killed my killed my jam mm-hmm. after the yeah. data scene and the and Riker and all of that then they were like yeah it's so important for people to know that they can die but we brought you back yeah <laughs> well and yeah and the doc like okay there's the blonde haired girl and the doctor yeah. like I can't I don't know if they're you know good people <laughs> right like I'm like he went all crazy scientists for like they were in his head basically and he was living among these synthetic life forms forever and and then decides oh wait no i was wrong i'm gonna be on the good side now and help resurrect picard (laughs) and then like i don't know it was a very strange bow on the you know on the end with this these characters yeah um so (laughs) but then i was like you know the show is called picard and if they're gonna have a season yeah you kind of need picard to be in the show called picard i legitimately thought that he was gonna die and then they were gonna name the ship picard that's what i thought was gonna happen that's a good that that's a good idea yeah. but that's not what happened that's not what happened <laughs> that's not what happened um we don't know what happened <laughs> so it's it's not but again too so part of the reason everyone's debating like what to do with picard now is because we have had characters die and come back you mm-hmm. know we have a harry kim is like the you know kenny yeah. of voyager <laughs> <laughs> true and isn't it true that like the harry kim that voyager ends with is not the same one that they started with right because they had that body that swap yeah, you might be right yeah and so they don't necessarily distinguish that mm-hmm. um so that was like my my initial when people were asking me like so is picard picard like that my initial thing is like well yeah i mean because we've done this before and it's you know and we have um, without spoilers we have that in discovery as well and um so mm-hmm. it's a hard but it's just the emotional tone of it i'm just kind of like nah, all right yeah sure. yeah whatever i don't care yeah yeah that's kind of how i felt too yeah but um you know we'll see we'll see what happens in season two I guess. we'll see what happens <laughs> <laughs> it shall be interesting in the least it'll be interesting um, I will say the thing that I did have a big problem with, which I I have no problem vocalizing, is uh, the smoking. I'm not okay mm. with. Um, just because, and it's not that it's like vices or whatever, like I get it as characters. I just, we kind of as a society have decided that it's kind of irresponsible to have that be a cool thing in TV shows to do. And 
that captain looked pretty badass smoking his cigar. And I'm like, mm hmm. As I've had, I've lost multiple family members to esophagus and lung cancer. And I am like, it just really rankled me mm. to have it be cool. Like, you want to be, like, Rafi is a great character. And I understand that they were trying to show her alcoholism and her vices and, you know, her vaping and everything like that. But I just feel like it's so, we are still impressionable human beings. And it's so dangerous and it's so poisonous. Mm. And I'm just, I was like, oh, God. You know, I get it. I get it. I love cigars. I think you look cool smoking one. <laughs> like, but yeah. it's but it's not healthy. And um, I was honestly like, I have a very similar reaction when I see that kind of thing. Um, but I was also like, you have a cigar with ash around like computer stuff, <laughs> like. That was, yeah, that was that was my next reaction. It was like, God, that shit must stink. <laughs> <laughs> Got embedded cigar for like in a closed ship environment. Like I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, how can that be yeah. good? <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, yeah. Again, it is what it is, but yeah. Uh, yeah. I thought they, they were interesting characters. Rafi was was a lot of fun and I very, you know, deep lots going on. Yeah. He was attractive, but not exactly that interesting i mean there were some interesting things but yeah you know, he was clearly like the pirate captain that's yeah. and i did i liked the holograms did make me laugh they were funny. legitimately made me laugh out loud it <laughs> took me an embarrassingly long time to realize they were all him actually <laughs> <laughs> that's funny i mean credit to him because that guess, was yeah. all acted very well <laughs> like i saw him and i was like oh it looks like him and then i just assumed it wouldn't be That's or funny. something and then so my brain was just like it's someone who just looks like him but it's not him yeah i gotta say there were multiple times where i was kind of screaming at the television because the programming of that emh definitely needs to be revisited like you are there is someone actively dying on the ship and you show up and you're like what's the nature of the medical emergency <laughs> she's like it's fine go away and he's like okay. yeah yeah <laughs> that's not it's just but it is it's a rogue pirate ship you know, yeah. all right, your EMH can be programmed however you want it to be. I get, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think there was some, like, subplot about how they were created. I sort of missed that, but <laughs> it was, it, but it was funny. It did it make was fun. laugh. Yeah. Um, the comic yeah. relief. I did, and I liked the, like I said, I really liked his Romulan couple that were yeah. hanging out with him. That they was, were awesome. They were very sweet. Um, I wish we'd seen more of them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah, it's like, it was a decent, in terms of sci-fi stories, like I said, it was, it was fairly decent. I feel like mm -hmm. it was pretty accessible to people. And that's why I was like, when I was watching it, because I messaged, you know, we talked about this, like, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. So I was mostly through Picard. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, like, you can, you can watch it. Even just seeing a little bit of Next Gen. Yeah. And um, if you just watch these few things. Yeah, because actually I would <clears throat> say for anybody who's in my position who's still relatively new to Star Trek, um, Picard is not super spoilery. Mm -mm. There's, there wasn't, because that's, that was my concern. It's like, oh God, I have to finish Next Gen first, like, right. and before I can watch Picard. Um, but it really is not, if you watch these just bare minimum episodes that we talked about in the beginning today, you can dive right in and it's not going to give you spoilers yeah really on that note this is probably a good point to on bottom underline this and we can hopefully do this live next time i mean yeah. we're doing it live now but like so people can interact with us right <laughs> um because also the star trek twitter page at, for people watching us because we weren't able to get this working live uh, again sorry for anyone who tuned in but um the Star Trek Twitter account is currently just started live tweeting first contact. So I'm going to go first contact. <laughs> um, Excellent. But uh, we will, we will post this. We will share this. And um, thanks to people for watching. Thanks to you yeah. for binging through some serious Star Trek in the last week. Oh, it was such a hardship. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think I, we should, we'll pick this up once we get, so feel free for people to like leave comments and questions and, um, we'll pick it up. Yeah. Yeah. We'll pick it up soon. Cool. All right. Thanks. That's perfect. Happy first contact Bye. day. Happy first contact day. <laughs> All right.